we'll just run through. Okay, so <clears throat> basically in this uh, video, um, the approach will be, uh, we'll take this Google Colab here that we've been working with, right? And it runs through a few basic steps, but the basic uh, outline here is, you can follow it in the tabs, but we import in the libraries. Uh, we then um, are able to take from the SK Learn library, the uh, Boston house price data set, which is a sort of celebrated data set that's used extensively. It's not a huge data set, it's only 506 uh, observations or 506 rows, but we take this data set and we'll do the OLS. Um, you know, the approach here is uh, the 14 variables, the 14 columns that we have, and the 506 um, rows of data that we have uh, median house prices for uh, electoral districts in Boston, and each value here 24 denotes 24,000, and it's the median value in an area, an electoral district. And then we have these other um, independent variables or attributes, if you like, that we're going to use to predict uh, the median uh, value. And an explanation of those is provided here, right? So that might be something that's worth uh, taking note of. Um, but the process, in terms of just a technical exercise we've run through here, so there's some exploratory data analysis, okay? fine. And we do, we look at the interrelationships between the variables, so the price and the level of crime and price and the zoning. So then um, for the bigger properties, bigger property lots, you can see the price typically goes up. And if there's more industry, but as non-retail, uh, the price goes down. And if you're close to the Charles River, the price goes up. So th those interrelationships we explore, and then the correlations give us Correlation matrix gives, gives us formal measures. But then <clears throat> once we get past that, we're through the pre-modeling and then into the modeling. And the most standard approach to model is OLS, right? Ordinary least squares. And that says, look, there's a linear relationship between the target variable and then the attributes, the independent variables. And we use the stats model, we import it in stats model, and we estimated an OLS, and we had this more traditional type output, kind of econometric type format, where we have our coefficients lined up, our standard errors, our T values, and then our P values. And we could say which variable was statistically significant. And then we got an overall measure of the R square, right, which is, the goodness of fit. So typically to say how good overall the fit is, you're looking at that R squared and adjusted for degrees of freedom 73, they're quite close. And then you're looking for statistical significance. For the most part, all the p-values uh, other than looks like these two. So the industrial, right, that doesn't look statistically significant because this is greater than 0 0.05. And then uh, age, it's not statistical, st statistically significant. So the T values are less than, way less than, than two, and the P value is greater than zero point zero five, and we have that for uh, the indust column, and also for the age. Age of the property, sometimes property a little bit older it is, it might be in a more central location, so it actually is worth more. So it's not statistically significant, wouldn't appear to be at first glance on the basis of T value and P value to be statistically significant. So that's the first thing we can observe. <clears throat> and what we'll try to do is we'll try to replicate this in Excel, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. And then we go on uh, and we use both linear regression and random forest. I'm just gonna focus on this session on uh, linear regression and we go through a process where we okay we estimate the full sample and you can see here using uh, the SK learn libraries we 
uh, implement linear regression and we have the x values equal to everything else other than price and the y uh, column equal to price. So we've splintered off or spliced or cut, bifurcated the price and every other variable. Uh, and then we run a regression and this is the output that we get. Okay, so we can demonstrate. Let's just put that up here for a second. And you can compare the output we're getting from sklearn against what we got from the stats model um, uh, library. And you can see, look, they're the same, right? The, uh, the coefficient was also found to be 36. But if we take the coefficients then for criminality, negative 0 0.108, uh, the for the zoning 0 0.0464 same uh, for ls ls stat right so the lower status individuals you can see we're getting the same um reading for the variable so the two are consistent and that's good right that's important then we get to see that okay <clears throat> so that's that now then what I would like to do is just to set that up in Excel for a moment, right? Just to get some of the intuition. So to, to do that, we've got to go back to the beginning, but um, I'm gonna come out of this Google Colab and I'm gonna go into a new one and I'm gonna to refer to this Google Colab as Excel explanation. And it's basically the same Colab, except I'm gonna just concentrate on the ordinary least squares bit, not I'm going to uh, not touch the random forest. And of course, I'll import in the pandas and the sklearn and all these libraries for uh, graphing. And then we, the, the uh, nicely, very conveniently, the Boston house price data set is available in sklearn. And we can look at that data and we can take a look at the, the first number of rows and then we can attach what we call the labels, right? And then there's the data description as before. So we can um, we can look at that a little bit de detail later on. Um, and then you can, can see here now data with the labels attached is the fully fledged pristine data set. And, you know, we can take the first 10 rows and so on. Now, what I'd like to do is just to write out to a CSV file, right, this data set, and the PWD tells us exactly where we'll find that in the folders, and there are folders here in the Google Colab, and we're looking for the content folder, so we just hit this arrow pointing up, and you see the content folders here, and there isn't much in here. There is some data available in here as CSV files and JSON file and so on, but, not the one, we're not the Boston data set, right? So to write that out, we use this panda command data to CSV. And the data is the name of the, of the file, right? So data is now the object we created. Um, and the Boston data set is in there. I want to write that out to uh, the folder here, the content folder. That mightn't happen immediately. There can be a little bit of latency because it's got to go up to a server and so on. So if we maybe just close it and open it up again, we might see the peering and it's now here, right? And I can observe that directly. If I double click on that, you can see the Boston price, the Boston house price data set is now available. We can actually view it and all the variables are in there. So going from price to criminality, right? You can see it's all there, right? all 506, 506. So we started the first row was zero. The last row was 505. So in all there's 506 rows, right? In our data set. Okay, now if I want to download that onto my machine, I can, right? And now it's, we can take a look at it. It's come down, it's in the download folder and uh, I have it on the other monitor. So I'll just drag it in and that's our data set, right? Now this is a CSV file, okay? But this is the information and it's kind of, maybe it's useful to look 
uh, eyeball the data directly and the Excel, it's not a, such a big file, right? So you can actually toggle down through relatively quickly. And it is a, a data set that's not so big that you can't manipulate in Excel. So that's something I think that probably offers us a little bit extra leverage. Now, what we can do is we could take our price here and run that OLS again, right? So for instance, um, what we can do is uh, we can say, look, I want to predict the house prices using OLS, right? I want to model the house prices using, using ordinary squares. So we can come to data, data analysis, and come over here to regression. And then um, I'd better just isolate the Y, the Ys. And that's, and I'm going to include the labels, right? So make sure we have that clicked. And then we just highlight the, the price. And remember the price is the median price in each of the 506 electoral areas. And then we take the X's, which is basically everything else, right? So X is not a single variable, it's one. And I have to be careful not to include the first column because the first column is the is the row number. So we don't need, we don't want that. And then the output would be fine, maybe in that area there. I'll just put, set it up like that. And we can put in residuals and things. In fact, yeah, we could probably put in some of this um, normality and all so on. Residual plots, I think I'll put them in right? So we can eyeball it. Now we'll get extra, right? So we have other graphs here. Um, and probably I did too much. But let's just for the sake of argument move these over just a little bit and uh, look at what we have here. We have the output from our regression. And if we examine here the um, coefficient outputs, right? We have that 36. So again, if you go back into the Google Colab for a moment, right? Uh, which was here, right? Um, and we can make a direct comparison with the Excel output that we had, right? So this OLS that we had, we can copy that and we can go in and compare against Excel, right? Um, and um, I actually have one that's pre-cooked, right? So I run this estimation before, maybe I'll just drag that in so you can take a look, right? And this is the output from the regression. Now it's exactly the same as what we have here, right? And I'll just put in the stats model underneath so we might be able to see more directly that the output is the same, right? So it's not coming in like that. So can I paste as a picture? Okay, let's try that. Right, so um, it might be easier to actually go down below here and just copy these. Okay, copy that output and then go into Excel and make the direct comparison and I just paste. And that's not formatting the way I like, so paste special uh, text maybe. Okay, so that's gone in and you can see the coefficients are the same. Look, the crime is the same. Uh, the zoning here, same coefficient LSTAT. Uh, we're getting the same uh, coefficient. Also note that the R squared is 74%, right? And that's what we had obtained also in our Google Colab. In the stats model, we have 74% um, also, right? 74.1. And um, when we 
uh, executed. So we set out our formula, we said all the variables in the data set we want to regress onto the price. We did. We got the OLS output from the stats model. We then ran, we split up our Y dependent variable. We separated away from the rest of the data set. So we dropped the price and everything else was X and Y was the single column for the median house prices. That's what we want to predict. Then we ran a regression using SKLearn. We got the COF intercept, the 3545, which we see, you know, it's fairly clear, uh, 36 now is that for the training? Um, yeah, this is for the training data set. So previously we had got uh, 3645, right? And when we did full sample here, Right, we're getting uh, LM fit, but are we using the training data set? It's 30, let's just run this. So run our regression. And then output our intercept. Okay, 36, and let's compare against what we have here. Is 30, okay, it's 36. So they are the same, right? So 36, and then for, 36. Okay, so they, they, it's good, right? The, we, the, the intercept is aligned to what we had in the uh, collab, right? The 3645. So that's fine. And this is for the full sample. We haven't split the data set yet into the testing and training, right? And then when we run our estimates here, you can see that's from SK Learn, and we've just outputted the coefficients. So we're saying the attributes and the coefficient attributes and coefficient. That's fine. And intercept. Now, if we wanted to predict the taking the values that we had, right, taking the values, the coefficients that we've obtained in the SKLearn model, if we wanted to run a model fit in SKLearn, in this Python notebook, that's uh, straightforward to do would say okay we gave the model a name it was LM right and we can predict what the fitted median house prices were if we input into our model uh, the varying uh, attributes right so if we take the independent variables and put into our OLS model we can get a model fit and that's the y underscore predict right and if we were to take a look at those right so if we took a look at the actual prices and just take the first 10 we would have 24 21 34 and that's consistent with what we would have here if we go into our excel spreadsheet right look at the actual prices 24 21 34 33 they're the same as what we have here in the Google Colab, 24, 21, 34, 33. So these are the actual prices, but what does the model predict, right? And to get the model prediction, I say, okay, let's take our LM predict and let's put in the first 10, uh, um, the first 10, um, rows of independent variables and see what the model predicts. And we're getting 30, 25, 30, 28. Now to understand what's going on here, obviously just 506 predicted variables. I'm only taking the first 10 really just to eyeball and to glimpse at, right? But what's going on in the background? What's going on in the background is we've taken, I probably should shut this one down now. No, the other one. Um, I'll shut this uh, spreadsheet down, don't save. What I've done is I've taken the coefficients and I've copied them. And then I've come up and I've control uh, home, paste special, paste special values and transpose, right? And I've aligned them I've set them up as a as a row of data with each of the attributes. 
And then I've actually put here, right? So I have the intercept crim criminology and so on. So these are the coefficients, if you like. And then I've taken each of those coefficients and multiplied, I've done a sum product. So I've taken this value, this coefficient and multiplied by this observation. And I've taken this Zn and multiplied by this observation and so on. So that when I come over here and take a look at that, you can see I'm getting the sum product. So we've A3, which is the intercept, and then I take B3 and multiply it by the actual observation for criminality for the first row. And then likewise, I do C3, which is the coefficient from the OLS regression and multiply, and I keep doing that. I've also dollarized the coefficients so that I've locked in uh, their uh, values in this fit. And then when I hit return, you can see I get that 30.0038. And then if I, if I drag it, let's say for sake of argument, this wasn't here, this column of data wasn't in there, right? I've produced the fit in the first, so for the first row of data, I've produced this fit multiplying the coefficients of the model against the actual observations for the x's. And then if I drag that down again, I get the second fit. So this time it's the second row in the data set multiplied by the respective coefficients. And then I pull down again, I drag it down again. And if you double click, you can see I'm multiplying. So what am I getting here? If I go down the first four or five, Right, these are the coefficients that I'm getting. If I go back into the Google Colab for a moment, right, we said the actual values are these, but then the model fit are these ones here. So I can copy this, copy, copy selection, go back into Excel. Remember what this is, it's to predict for the first 10 using the, the data set the house price data set and we can just paste here and take a look right and you can see the first value here 30 corresponds with this 30 here the 25 that we have corresponds with 25 the 30 56 corresponds with this one the 28 corresponds here and so on so basically we have created a model fit in Excel by multiplying the coefficients by the respective values in the rows, right? And so now we've the model fit, right? And I just drag that down along. Okay, and so for each set of Xs, there is going to be a predicted value for the predicted or an a predicted value. So this is the actual price. What we have here is the actual price, right? And what we have here is the, the predicted or the fitted price, medium price. And then the error in our model, right? The error that we have is the difference between the actual and the fitted value. It's the difference between the actual value and the fitted value, right? So I can then like before, I can just drag that down. So it's just basically what I said was, look, uh, we have the actual value and we subtract away the fitted value. Okay, so if, if for the sake of argument, I was to do that just manually, I'd say, okay, take the actual value and subtract away the fitted value. And then if I drag that down, I have the error for each, right? So we can do, if you like, um, if we were to, um, you know, set up like what was done before, the actual against the predicted, we could insert, I could take these two together and we could say price against the fitted price. If I highlighted both of these columns together, right, we can compare the actual against the fitted. And we've done that in, in the Google Colab, right? As you go down to the Google Colab, you would have observed where we had done that. So we can insert and we can do a scatter graph 
and okay so basically that's the fitted price against the actual price the fitted price against uh, the actual now I can go uh, select data here and we'll just delete that one remove and then we have the fitted price against the actual okay so let's take a look at that graph again down here at the bottom it's the fitted price against the actual okay now when we go into google colab we see something similar right we did fit the actual against the fitted the, the predicted price against the actual price right so there was a version of that now this was with the full sample if oh no this was with the training okay this is with the training data so it's not exactly the same but it's the same idea right uh, comparing the fitted and then the error if you like that we've estimated here so we'll just remove that the error that we have here is the difference between the two now how would we estimate our r squared right r squared and well we had the r squared already and remember we said it was 74 percent and we found that in sklearn and in the stats model we could have estimated, obtained that by taking one minus the variance of the actual price and divide uh, the, so we take this ratio and have subtract it away from one. So obviously the error, the variance of the error is going to be less than the variance of the, um, of the, of the actual price so we have a value less than one and then when, when we subtract that away from one we get the 74 percent which is what we have here okay now uh okay so that's the basic idea we're creating we're taking the data we're estimating an ols we're getting coefficients we're producing measures of error and from that then we can pull out our squares so the rest of that collab then is following suit there right so we have outputted a predicted value for the model the 30 to 25 and the 30 right and when we go back in here we can see we were getting the same 30 25 30 it's all the same values and uh, we then want to we estimated the r squared so i can read that out okay so let's and go again here Okay, so let's just, uh, obviously I have to run them fully. Right, so we're getting our intercept, we're getting our coefficients for the full sample, we're getting our predicted uh, Y and our actual values. And then when we predict using the first 10 observations, we have and our r squared here is the 7406 right and we have seen that before 74 uh, 741 rounding and in excel uh, 7406 okay so it is uh, they're aligned right which is great Okay, so we've got down as far as the r squared here next thing we want to do then is do something that's very important and that is split the data between a training. We want to take that full sample of 506 and split up our data. Now we split the data in terms of the Y and the, the dependent variable and the independent variables, but we also want to create, very importantly, right, in terms of our analysis here, a training data set and a testing. And the idea is that we split our data up and we put 30% to one side right and we hold those in reserve and the other 70 percent we use to estimate the ols model again right but uh, built into the sk learn libraries is this uh, functionality to do this split this is more nuanced than what it appears at first glance it it actually does 
take into account uh, that the values in both data sets have to be somehow aligned. So we try to, that the training and testing, the, the values, the means, and the standard deviations are set up in such a way that they would be reasonably close to each other. So we qualitatively, even though we split the data, the two data sets would be quite similar, but we are taking one as a training which has been used to train the algorithm, used to train or to estimate the uh, OLS. And then we will perform, estimate the R squared on the training data set. And that's in sample, if you like. And then we'll go outside. Once we estimate the coefficients uh, in the training data set, we'll then apply that in the other data that we haven't been using, the testing data set, to see does the R square stand up and are we getting robust estimates for goodness of fit? R squared is goodness of fit. So we split the data and then we typically, we would run the OLS regression again, but this is for just the training for 70% of the data. We're getting an intercept. It's a little bit different to the intercept we got before, right? So we're not a million miles away from where we were. It was before with the full data set 36. Now we have 35, sorry, 36 again, which is fine with the training data sets, right? And then to get the intercepts, sorry, to get the coefficients, we run the same line of code again, but we're using the X train. And we can compare that to what we had before, right? So if I go back, and compared to what we had before for the full sample, you can see there's a bit of a difference. Not exactly the same. Similar, but not exactly the same as the full sample. Okay, so uh, that we should take note of, right? Then, right, how do we evaluate the model? We do the same steps as before. We predict, we use not the full, data, but the training data, and then we estimate an R squared and so on. We're getting 74% again, roughly, it, but it is a slightly different R squared. And then we do a predicted versus actual price against the model fit. Okay, now we can do that again. Uh, we can set that up um, in Excel, right? But for the just here initially, what we're going to do is just have a look at our, the level of error. So the residuals here is basically the error that we would have seen before. It's the difference between the actual and the fit predicted uh, minus the, the actual values minus the uh, predicted. That's the error. The error is, uh, you can see the range here of values uh, for the predicted prices and for the residuals. And we can see the pattern, the data, does it get a little bit wider as we increase the, the, the price? I'm not, I don't think so. I don't, we see a pattern here. Um, there are some outliers, of course. Um, it is relatively normal in distribution. When we look here at the residuals, uh, maybe we have these outliers, okay, that are reflected over here a bit. Uh, it's approximately zero, so that might be reasonably okay. Um, now, if we wanted then to just run that regression again in Excel, uh, we should write out the training data, and I'm going to put it here, and I want to write out the to CSV files the testing data. So let's run those, right? And then we can... Now it might take a second, uh, but they're all here now and I can download each of those, right? So we can download the X test, the X training, that'll go into my download folder, download the Y test and download the Y training. So they're all sitting there and I can open up uh, the training. So the Y training and just take a quick look. And the training has 70% of the 560, but you can see when you look the rows, 
they're not sequential. It's basically, it's selected. So SK Learn, is doing something here, it's selecting the date in a particular fashion, but this is the wide training data set. And we have 70% of 506. So we could take a quick 0 0.7 multiplied by the 506 is equal to 354. That's roughly what we're getting. So that's 70%. That would tally with our expectations then. And we could copy this, of course. I could take the price data, copy, and then go into the, uh, in the downloads, go into, um, let's just, uh, the X training, X train data, and we can just paste here beside home paste. In fact, I should have taken both. So maybe that's what I'll do just to verify uh, the two tally together. So I'm going to take both columns here, copy, and then come over and take a look here and paste. So if I paste home paste. Now check the, the row number 84, 84, 354, 354. So these tally, the row numbers are selected in a specific way. Right Now we don't need those any longer so I'll just delete these ones out. And then what we should do then is run a regression like what we did before and just verify that for the training data, we get the same coefficients. So again, data, what if analysis, sorry, data analysis. So it's the data tab and then not what if analysis, we're actually looking for the data analysis and then we come to regression. And then we say, look, we want to run. Now it's set up in such a way, I think that it's going to give us it basically is prompting us to do what we had done before, labels, and then here. So actually that might just work. Let me just see, confidence, labels, uh, looks okay. Looks okay. Okay, so I have some empty cells, that's the problem. So I actually have to, so the Y range is going to be what we have here. And we only have 354 uh, or so. And then the X's is everything else, right? But don't put in the first row, right? The first column, uh, because the first column is the row number and we don't need it. And then we'll output our results. And let's see what we're getting. Now we're getting coefficients here but let's look at our 70, we are getting 74. So on, can we verify against what we did in Colab? Let's go remove maybe some of the, yeah, okay. So what we'll do, we'll just take our coefficients that we have here and we'll compare. So I'll go back into the, the coefficients for a second and have a look at our training data when we ran that estimation before. So this was with the training data. Let's just copy the output here and verify that the output that we're getting in the training data set here is consistent between the Colab and Excel regression. So um, let's paste special and I think we used text before and we can make the comparison and you can see uh, this is for the full sample so I should have obtained that was for the full sample x column that x, that's the full sample I'm looking for x train column so it's the next one down so it's this one I should have put in so copy these copy and go back into excel for a moment and then we'll just paste. And we have to be a little bit careful the way we paste, paste special and just put in text, right? And you can see the values are the same. So if I maybe just insert, 
uh, insert, shift cells down, and then line up the values. And you can see negative 12, negative 12, negative 0 0.05, negative 0 0.05, and the LSTAT, negative 0, 0.52, negative 0, 0.5234. So the, the values are the same, okay, for the training. So that's the first step. Now we can go through the next. Having done that, we could actually go back into, uh, use the same format uh, that we have here. And then, um, build into it um, the same type of uh, approach here, estimate the model, like what we've done, uh, then estimate the fitted value, the R, and get the R squared, and just see if we can replicate uh, the estimation, right? Um, okay, so we've estimated then in the here in this uh, file here, the training, and we have the coefficients, right, that we had estimated before. So we we ran the um, OLS estimation again, and we've done this purely for the training data set, of which in the full data set was 506 observations. Here we have uh, 354. Now, if I was to do a fit for the, and we got an R squared here of 74% uh, 65. And if you compare that against what's in the Google Colab, um, the, co the uh, R squared uh, for the training, 7460. So let's take a look at that, close look, 74659, right? 74659, let's, we can even copy and we can compare. So copy selection and we go into Excel and we make the direct comparison, home and paste. And you can see the value here tallies 746599, 746599. Okay, so it looks as if it's, uh, it's fine. Now what I'm going to do is do what I did before, uh, but I'm gonna set it up in uh, like what we've done with the full sample, put the coefficients here and then try to pull out a predicted price and then estimate the error, okay? Now the training set is aligned in such a way that we have A6 here and we have uh, the first row at A6, so that's fine, right? And I'm gonna take the coefficients, I'm gonna copy the coefficients here copy and then I'm going to go into the other spreadsheet and just where the training set data set is just follow the again the same footprint we had before and paste so it's one cell down and it's home paste special transpose values and transpose okay so you can see it aligns, it's very similar in construction. It has to be, it's very similar in construction to what we had before. And then I'm gonna take the formula from here, just the formula, copy. And remember this is Q6, okay? So let's go into training and we find Q6, control V, put an equal sign in front Okay, and we have the model fit. Now let's just check uh, Q6. Okay, wrong one, delete. So it should be on Q6. So control V and then put an equal sign in front and we have the fitted value. Okay, and then we can pull this down. Uh, let's take, pull, drag down just a few and check that everything is kosher and it looks good. Okay, and then I can drag uh, down as before and these are the fitted values for the training set. Okay, so that's great. 
just the fitted values for the training set. Now I don't need the actual price here immediately, but this is the same as before. What we have is the predicted price and I'm gonna to have to estimate the error. So I'm gonna copy and put in those labels. And I think it's like this, home, paste. Now we have some error here but it's easy to estimate the error. The error is the difference between the actual price and the fitted or predicted price. Okay, so the error that we get then can be obtained like that. And then we can take a look at the R squared. How did we estimate the R squared before? The R squared was equal to the variance. So I just copied the formula, so it was basically the variance of the errors divided by the variance of the actual median prices. And I subtract that ratio from one. So if I go back into training and put in same as before, control V and equals equal and we have our, our 74%, 6599. And just to verify that result, go back into Google Colab and you can see that's the result that we have here, 746599 for the training set. Okay, so what remains to be done then is to consider getting the R squared for the testing data. And we've downloaded already the uh, Y test and the X test uh, data. So we can put those together, right? So we can go, um, well, first of all, Y test. Let's just open that up and we'll take this column. In fact, I'll do the other one first. So if we come back to um, Google Colab for a moment, and we have the uh, X test, so that just takes a second and we'll copy. And let's just drag down. And of course, this is a much smaller number. This testing is 30% of the data. And we'll go into our spreadsheet where we're running the bulk of these estimations would say it's test. Now we should follow the structure that we had before, right? So we want to follow what's here and we're going to paste at A5. So we come to A5 and home and it's paste. And it should be straightforward paste in. And then for the uh, Y test, which is open here, we had already partially copied, so I should take the full, that's only 153, copy, and then go back into our spreadsheet, and, uh, and paste in as well, paste. Now, should I go down one? No, that's fine. Now look how the rows align, so eight and eight, and then 289, 289. So th these are the numbers of the rows that were selected out by the sklearn split, split train test function. And we have the appropriate price consistent in the testing data set with the rest of the X values. So uh, we'll just delete this because we're already, we're now happy that they, they have aligned properly. And then we go to the training data set where we had those coefficients we had estimated on the training data set. So we'll just copy. And again, we'll go through the same series of steps. We'll paste in the coefficients and then we would like to generate the price so we can use the fitted price for the test using the training coefficients, copy. Escape, we'll come over here and we'll paste 
put an equal sign in front. Okay, so if we put an equal sign in front, we'll get the fitted value for the testing. And 11, 0, 7, 8, and we can pull that down a little bit. Okay, uh, so we're getting the fitted or predicted fitted price. Okay, uh, here. Um, now, if we go into the Google Colab for a moment and we do what we did before, uh, we can predict. So previously we had predicted values. So we can take LM predict, right? So we've already predicted um, using the training set. So split and so on. So we've trained our model and we've obtained the coefficients, right? And then we can run this Y predict now is from the training set. If we take uh, like what we've done before, let's take copy selection and come down to uh, the training. We can do it here and control V and just make sure we have X test so it has to be underscore and it's t-e-s-t -E and we also want to uh, okay why predict and then we can um get the uh the, the top uh four values right so it should be we can output like what we had done previously, uh, Y head. So we'll just take this syntax here, uh, copy, and come down, control V, uh, and it should not be X, it should be test, T-S-T, and it's underscore, control, underscore and run and we get these values let's copy those values and see do they correspond to the values that we have in our spreadsheet okay let's put them here okay so the values we're getting are the same right so we use the testing we use the coefficients from the training estimation and then we apply them the training coefficients on the test data and the fit that we get 11 26 17 19 36 11 26 17 19 36 so this is the fitted data using the training uh, coefficients and the testing data Okay, and then we'll drag that down. We'll drag the value, the rest of the values down. So we get all the predicted values. And like what we did before, to get the, to estimate the error here, we subtract the, take the price and subtract away the predicted price. So that produces our error. And then to like, before, right, we want to estimate then the R squared. That's very simply done. Let's just take the formula we had before. I'm going to copy. And then we put, we align it here. So escape. Um, so I've copied. <laughs> Just copy the formula, copy, escape, go into our test worksheet, control V, then put equal in front to activate the formula. We get 71%. 
let's go into the co the collab and check what the r squared is we'll just run through we'll predict the value so using the training coefficients and the testing data we'll predict the fit for the testing data and then we'll estimate the r squared and we get if you check here it's 71 percent let's copy that copy and then compare what we did in our spreadsheet and see is it are the values the same and we okay so what we find is the value is not exactly it's very close what we obtained in the google collab for test for the test data set on the boston house price uh, index it's not exactly the same as the r squared we had estimated like this um but we can if we use a slightly different formula uh, where we follow what we had before except we make one small change here and that is escape so double where we change um our instead of estimating the variance of the error we take the sum squared and then we adjust we multiply the variance uh, to take into account uh, the uh, count so n minus one we multiply underneath and when we run that a uh, second line of code so return and then equal to just in front of that formula which is basically the same as before one small change our r squared here in the spreadsheet using the data downloaded for the for the test for the boston house price data set we can observe here seven one two one eight one eight three and that's exactly in line three seven seven four zero nine one nine and then we stop here so after X, this number of digits uh excel then doesn't give us further iterations on the digits so we have a relatively high level of accuracy here already and we can see it tallies then with the r squared produced okay so the idea here is that we try to explain a little bit the context for the google collab um and how the sk learn uh, libraries can be tooled set up so that we can split our data set into training and testing and we went through here where we estimated the full sample worked out the coefficients the r squared we also uh, applied the same type of analysis verified that the coefficients were consistent in excel with those obtained from the Google Colab, from the Python notebook in SK, using the SK Learn uh, libraries. We have verified that we were able to duplicate the R squared uh, going between uh, both. So 74659919667 and then we run out of digits. And then in the testing data set, we just made one change in our estimation of R squared and we verified that the R squared synced with that of the Google Colab. Okay.